Last time I built a giant new factory and slashed a bunch of machines inside to automate iron, gold, copper and zinc. And today, we're going to get this factory finished, both inside and out. So on the outside, it's clear we've got a lot of work to do. We need to texture the stone, we need to add some more roads around the side here, and we also need to do some mild terraforming around and about to tie it all together. But not only that, underground, we also need to sort out the delivery collection system for everything we're going to be producing up here, and we also need to tidy up some holes by the looks of it. And alongside that, we're going to need a brand new delivery van so we can transport the goods from here all the way back over to the main warehouse. So like I said, there's lots of do and that's just the outside on the inside we still have more work to do we've got more machines to make because well i mean having nuggets is all well and good and in fact they're coming in quite nicely but ingots are going to be much more useful plus we have other shinies we need to make in here such as brass and andesite alloy but before we can get to any of that however We've got a few things we need to sort out from last episode. There's a few things here that we need to improve, mainly for, well, not so much for efficiency, but more for moving things. So, for example, this gold here is, is useless. We need that over there. We need this gold over there. We need to put the dead bushes somewhere, I guess. So we're going to be making use of some draw controller slaves for those. And I also need to add a few void upgrades here and there, mainly to get rid of flint. But hopefully this bit won't take too long and then we can crack on with everything else we need to do. But this is pretty much just going to involve me going underground a little bit and connecting up some drawers to the two gold ones. I think they're the only ones I need to connect, at least for now. I think I've got them linked up, but tidying this up down here is going to be quite interesting, isn't it? That's a problem for future beardy. But now what I need to do is replace this with one of them. I am going to reattach this one to the system for now, though, just so we can keep collecting the dead bushes. But hopefully all the gold should now go in here. And this is exactly what I was talking about. So Flint has now got to here because this box is full. So if I add a void upgrade on there and get rid of this bit, that'll solve that problem and this machine shouldn't back up anymore. And if we replace this here with one of those, then in theory, because this is now attached to this box here, we can get rid of that. The quartz should still go in. But more importantly, it means I can get rid of this bit here, which will help prevent any potential accidents of basically getting the cobble onto here but not only that we're also going to be needing some cobble so what i'm going to do is put these drawers here quickly get rid of all the gold put cobble in there and i basically just want to make sure i've always got a box of cobble here because we're going to need that for something else so i just need to fix this bit of water i've broken there but other than that i think we've made things a little bit better everything should be going through yep look we're getting loads more gold in here now this is good now that's sorted we can work on some factory expansions and we're going to start that over here by basically just turning these things here into ingots so we're going to make use of some item drains on this side then we need four basins a couple more item drains We'll connect to the storage here. Add some draw controller slaves there. And then I just need a bunch of mechanical presses. We've only got one there. So let's just get some more. Add those in like that. Then if we put entrance funnels like that, the exits should come out here. We'll put more entrance funnels there. And I know we could use andesite ones, but the brass ones look better. And the last thing I need is just a bit of power up here. I reckon if I just quickly move this draw controller over, then we can just steal the power from there. Nice and simple. And I think, apart from the fact we've got nowhere to store this stuff, we're good. And thinking about that, I probably should add some storage somewhere. Maybe just sort of on this wall here would work. I could just stick up a bunch of drawers here and we can kind of use that as somewhere we can just walk in and grab a few ingots when we need them if we're in the area. But other than that, we can link it up to the storage down below. I think that's going to work. And the link is right there. Look at that. Let's just jam some drawers in. Eight should be fine for now. And I think as soon as I put these funnels on here... We should start getting ingots. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And they're all going in nicely over here. This is good. And because these are all attached to the draw system, it means we can now do other things with these. So, for example, if we were to take iron ingots and some andesite, we could automate andesite alloy. Although, thinking about it, the andesite is actually in this vault as opposed to in a drawer, isn't it? But I think I've got an easy solution for that. So if we were to say put andesite there, swap this block out for a draw controller slave, break down a tiny bit of the wall briefly, get rid of that, and grab ourselves a hopper. We can just grab some out of this vault and shove it straight into this box. Yeah, look at that. And now we can grab andesite from the draw system too. Now this is caught up. We can see its actual speed. Not much of it. It's not very fast at all, is it? But it's fine. Over time, it's all going to build up. And then the stuff's there when I need it, right? But if we are going to be making andesite alloy, and we do need actually quite a lot of that, maybe I should stick in an additional iron farm. We could probably stick one down here, couldn't we? It's fairly small. And the draw connection's right here as well. So let's grab some spruce. 
all that up to here. We'll just stick another one there for now. But once the farm's all built, we will switch that out for one of these. Because what we want to be doing is pulling out cobble from the system, which is basically why we stuck another box of cobble over there. And then we want to crush it down and then we want to wash it. And that's basically just going to get iron from gravel. And it's actually a much better return rate than we get from the iron and the tough. So it should bulk up the iron supplies nicely. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just change the rotation of this bit down here. And then we can use this to get a belt going. And if we come out one more and have the belt go to, say, here. No, nope, it's going to need to be more like that. Then we'll go this way and then head back in this direction. We'll get all these attached like so. We'll get some vertical gearboxes in like that with some crushers on and a shaft in the middle there. It does occur to me we're actually going to need to pull this forward a little bit. We'll need a funnel there to take out cobble in stacks of 16, I think, is going to work best for us. And then at this point, we're going to need a speed controller because we need to slow things right down for the fans and the washing. And I think a few encased chain drives is probably going to be our best bets. There we go. And a couple of gearboxes there with a shaft in there. Should get that one going in the right direction. And then, to be honest, I might as well do this and have them feed back into there. If I do a little bit of shuffling down here, then I can make sure we never put iron back onto this belt as well. Because we certainly don't want that. And then I just need to get power over to... Nope, not quite there. But to there. And then we'll just stick a few fans at the back here, and that's what will actually wash things. But the bad news is we're also going to get flint, so let's quickly get rid of that. So we'll stick another drawer there. We'll put a void upgrade on it. And we'll put a flint filter on it. So this is going to make us a bunch of extra iron nuggets and we could feed them back into the system directly, make more ingots and so on. But we want to make andesite alloys. So I think it makes sense at this stage to actually make the alloy over here. And to make it, we just need iron nuggets and andesite. Nice and easy. I mean, we could use zinc, but iron's going to be quicker. So if we put the bowl there with a mixer on top, have a funnel going in from that side, which will be for the iron nuggets. And then we'll have a funnel coming in from this side, which will put in the andesites. And that should be nice and simple with a couple of item drains. And we'll just connect this up to the drawer system. Just like that. Once again, I will replace that with one of these sort of drawer controller slaves once I've got all the filters set up. But this just saves it spewing stuff out from the system that we really don't want it to be doing. And that should be facing that way. So we want this one to spit out andesite. Maybe we just want kind of like four at a time or something. We don't want loads at once. We'll stick a filter on there just to make sure that's what what we're gonna get and now i just need to get power to this and these are looking nice and fast maybe we can leech some off of this so this should in theory make andesite alloy for us looks a bit messy though doesn't it but let's make sure it works first so if i get rid of that and i put down a draw controller slave we should start getting cobble excellent that'll get crushed down into gravel which then gets washed that's going to give us, yep, flint. We know. Go away, flint. So that's all going to go in there and get voided. The iron nuggets will carry on. And if we put this here, we should get andesite. And then this will give us andesite alloy. Excellent. But it doesn't have anywhere to go right now. So let's quickly take one of those and put that in there. Well, that was nice and easy. I can't believe it's taken me over 3,000 days just to alternate andesite alloy. But there is still another farm I want to put in here. And this one's going to be a bit trickier because I want to make brass. And making brass is easy enough. We just need copper and zinc ingots and we've got plenty of those. But the problem is we also need to heat it. So we're going to need to make a small area where we can sort of feed lava buckets into it or blaze cakes or something like that. And then we need the contraption itself, of course. And I'm hoping we can fit it in this area here. It might be a bit tight, but we can probably get away with it. And in thinking about a layout for this, if we were to grab the copper from here and the zinc from here, we can have a mixing bowl on this corner and then we can just have a mechanical arm feeding it lava that we're sort of pumping in over here. So in fact... This should be quite straightforward. A few minutes later, I think I'm just about there. So I've hooked up the lava across the roof here. We'll obviously make it look nice later, but that's grabbing lava from the same place this one is. And then with the arm, we want him to take items from there, put them in there, and hopefully put the empty buckets in there when he's done. Let's see if he's going to do his job. I mean, kind of. He's, he's a bit sort of stuck in a loop. That's not ideal. So I think what I need is just two buckets going around because that way he'll take that one and then that will fill up and so on. So that should stop him. Just an extra bucket. And look at that. We barely took up any space at all. Now I just need to replace these with these again. And yep, there we go. The copper's coming out. 
And same thing here, and that should start bringing out the zinc. And now that's mixing. Come on. Yes, we've got brass. And then we'll store this over here. Wonderful. We're getting all the shinies. Now we'll just stick up a few safety rails. And I think machine-wise, the factory is now complete, at least for now. And we've actually still got an entire upper floor should we need it for anything else later. But knowing me, it'll probably stay empty and we'll probably just make another building for the next thing. But I do still need to make this area look nice because currently, well, it, it does not, really. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time decorating the interior of the factory here. We'll sort out the floor. We'll sort out the ceilings. We'll probably sort out the lighting as well. And then once we've done that, we can move on to the outside and, of course, the collection system down below. Because ideally what I want to be doing is linking all of this up into the main storage warehouse. Although I think we already have gold over there maybe. But I guess we're not going to start backing up on the zinc and the copper over there until we're filled up on brass. So it could be a while before we end up with a backup of that stuff. But that's fine because brass is more important than these two anyway. Right, enough waffle. Let's make you look nice. think it needed too much just some girders and chains essentially just making sure everything is attached to something else brackets on the lava tube help and of course we've got some of the giant signs as well because they're just too cool not to include other than that i've swapped the floor of the sort of machine bay areas to tough and various types of tough and the sort of path bit is more stone i've worn that down a little bit as well with some texturing but i think that's tied it all together nicely to be honest and we've already got well over a thousand andesite alloy which is amazing brass is a lot slower and we're completely out of zinc and copper but that's fine they'll catch up but now the inside sorted i think it's about time we tackle the outside we do have quite a lot to do out here and i think i'm going to start with this sort of corner here this parking bay and figure out what we're going to do for the walls here i swapped out the grass in the parking bay for a mixture of coarse dirt and dirty gravel and then added some phantom rails off the main track this meant that i could now move my personal train because it was just sitting in the middle of some grass but at the same time keep it off the main track with its very own parking space i then sorted out the adjacent wall adding in some stone and tough variants and use coarse dirt, leaves, grass and flowers to break up the verge a bit. It was at this point I realised that the passengers coming off the train would be walking straight into a road, on a bend. So I rotated the stair set 90 degrees for safety reasons. I then textured the road from the dock entrance, working my way along the front of the new factory, first sorting the road and then texturing the platform. The addition of a few crates and some general clutter finished the look. And now from this angle everything's looking pretty good and nicely polished. But now we need to tackle this side because what we need to do is bring this road that runs sort of under the building we need to bring this round the side here and then connect it up to here i guess so we might end up with a bit of a weird junction here but let's see what we can do i once again started on the roads connecting the top area in a sweeping curve down to the bottom and then stared at the janky junction i made a decision to wall it off dump down some coarse dirt and add a few containers and i think that kind of works after messing around with the underground rails for absolutely forever i eventually managed to get the trucks moving around on the new roads correctly and textured everything up including a part of the rail yard i apparently missed weeks ago when i last built round here i then textured the back of the building and once i place these few blocks here i think we're actually done with the exterior now i've managed to hide the damage we caused last episode when i was building the machines inside but i think we are actually completely done here now and it's certainly all looking a lot better but this road here trying to get this linked up to that with the tracks that was an absolute nightmare because of the going uphill going around corners and s bends and then all of these weird turnings here and the fact the truck still needed to get down there it has ended up looking quite messy down here but that's fine it's all underground and it looks good from up top that's what's important the next task is to go under here and well we need to do a bit of tidying up but we also need to sort out a delivery system here so we're gonna have trucks coming in from this side over there which means i'm gonna need a bunch of pickup points probably around here somewhere and besides that i'm probably gonna wall off some of these bits i need to hide these i could probably cover them to make them look a bit like air ducts i reckon but we'll tackle all that later the first thing i want to do is just to get all of this hooked up to the actual storage drawers and make sure we can get the items down here when we need them 
And I don't really care about the dead bushes, but we do want to be taking these six ingots here down. And as you can see, they are filling up quite nicely. I also made a slight adjustment over here so that once the andesite alloy is full, this will still keep producing iron and it just comes out this side. So basically we activate and deactivate this funnel here so we can either get andesite alloy or just make more iron, which is why we've got almost 7,000 of this. So down here, if we put in six storage interfaces like that and then round the back here, we'll do what we normally do and just use item drains, then input funnels there. And these are the drawers we need to link up to the system, which is, well, it's right there. So that's quite handy. So let's maybe just bring this down right here for now. We can always move it later if we need. And we'll just link those underground like that and cover it all up. Then we'll use temporary blocks and funnels to set all the filters. And then we'll replace these back bits here. So we'll just set these and replace these. And we should start getting what we want out the front here. Yep, there we go. So they're all set up, ready to have a truck come along and pick up everything. But I do need to figure out how we're going to make this look a little bit nicer. And I think the first thing I'm going to do, as I say, is just wall off some of it. We don't need the area to be quite so big down here. But I think it makes sense just to mark out some bits and bobs here first. So I might actually just have a wall that sections off this area right here. And we can bring that all the way up to the ramp. Basically, this bit here is particularly messy. So I think we can just hide that whole thing. And I don't think we need it to be as deep as it is here either. So maybe we can sort of cut it off along here somewhere. And then we'll have a wider area here where we can store some sort of bigger containers and things. But I'm also going to bring out this side here. Just so that the ramp doesn't look weird and exposed. Which I guess will match on that side. And we'll do the same over here as well. Just make sure it matches. There we go. That's going to look a lot more contained. And would basically give us a lot less stuff to have to deal with on the ceiling which is nice let's just quickly fill in some holes and i guess i should fill in these walls we'll get them textured later for now let's just block it all off and there we go i think that's a much better size to be working with what i need to do now though is decorate all of this make it look good and try and make it look like it belongs which means road ground probably a bunch of boxes and containers we need to get some brackets to attach things to the roof and of course i need to do a whole lot of texturing let's play some funky music and get this done And a short while later, I think our poorly maintained collection area is pretty much done. It's even got mushrooms growing. Disgusting. But I've basically just rammed it full of crates and things. I was going to do some big piles of shinies because, of course, this is the shiny factory. But that didn't seem like a very secure thing to be doing, really. So instead, we've got more shipping crates and boxes and things like that. But now we still have another task. And that, of course, is to get some form of delivery vehicle. Because we do have a few going around already. But they're all fairly busy, to be honest with you. So I think it's about time we had something new. And as it's going to be transporting all the shiny things, it should probably be something that looks a little bit more secure. So we're going to try and make some kind of 50s style-ish security van. I don't know how this is going to go. But I'm going to need to head off and grab the right resources for this and find somewhere to build it. To be honest, I'll probably just slap a station down on this road. There's loads of space here. So I've got a bunch of stuff. Let's build a van. And we're just going to build it down here by the docks because I already had a station down there that we can use. And because we want to make sure that this van can connect up to all of the same sort of collection points as everything else, we're going to make sure that the storage interfaces are in the same place. But I also don't want this van to be quite as long as the other vehicles. So I guess we won't have one that sticks out the back. We don't need this van to reverse up anywhere and sort of drop stuff off from the back. So we'll just ignore that one. Let's just get the frame built up. And I think, do we want to do maybe industrial iron for these? Let's see how it looks. Because the main body of this vehicle is actually going to be made out of the cyan terracotta. Because I'm thinking kind of a grey looking van should probably make it look a bit more security like. And hopefully it's not going to end up looking like a prison van. But I guess we'll find out shortly. And I think I want to give this van a bit of a sort of sticky outy nosy bit at the front here. So let's get a window in. Maybe with a solid block at the front like that. And then we can use these like this and that'll give it a nice shape at the front here we we'll use some framed buttons at the front we'll stick some lights in those later and i guess we should probably try and figure out the back here now so we'll start up just by building a big old square and then we'll see if we can add some detail and get it looking good in fact let's quickly get a roof on here as well something like that should do this is not looking good let's maybe raise this roof here a little bit Okay, a little bit better, but I think what we need to do is if I use some of these, put tile on the outside and normal on the inside, that makes a huge difference. I like that. All right, we're getting there. Let's maybe add a couple of windows. So if we do these little half windows, we can probably use more of the tile there and some windows. 
They're like tiny little bulletproof windows. I think that works. Or does it look a bit too prison vanny? Ah, we'll stick with that for now. Just get some finishing touches on, such as the wheels, some wing mirrors, and we need to sort out the back here. We could really do with the door there. Question is, what door do we use? We've got so many to choose from. Um, are there some kind of metal doors or something that can tie in nicely with this? Aha, maybe one of these. That's literally called a metal door. Let's try that. Color-wise, it might be a near-perfect match as well by the looks of it. So let's just chuck that in there. Ah, love it. Yeah, that worked perfect. Let's just get some license plates on. And to be able to open this door, we're going to need a button. So maybe we can add some rear lights to the thing as well. And we'll use either red wool or red terracotta. I think I prefer the terracotta. Slightly less garish. Shroom lights in the front. And now we need to sort out the inside. So we'll put train controls at the front. That's facing the wrong way. Let's try that again. Train controls there. Train controls there. And a seat. And it's probably going to be easier to place these from outside. So we'll have one facing that way, one facing down, and one facing this way. As I say, we won't worry about one sticking out the back. We haven't really got the space for that. And then we just need a few barrels for storage. With that, I think our small security van is done. Doesn't really need any more than that. Apart from to maybe actually be attached to some rail. That would help. And we'll just do what we normally do and connect it with glass panes. Because they're invisible. And glue it all together. Now the question is, is it actually going to fit under the, uh, under the building over there? Let's hope so. No. Nope. Go away, sir. Just set me on fire. That wasn't very nice. So let's take this thing for a spin and see if it's going to fit in the building. Oh, oh, don't crash, don't crash. Yeah, that's close. After you, sir. Right, will it fit? It looks like it might just about fit. I mean, it's a bit close, but it's fine. And it gets out the other side fine as well. Excellent. So now what I need to do is get this lined up to all of the stations. So if we put the first one there, if we pull into that station, that should now be lined up with the fifth space. Yep, that's correct. But that's actually the second station. So that'll be the first one. And what we're going to do is just space these two blocks apart, the same as we have upstairs. And then what we need to do is just set up the same redstone we normally do so that when a train actually pulls into the relevant station, that's when it activates the storage things because otherwise it's going to pick up random stuff as it drives past them. But we've done this enough times and we know it's fairly easy to do. We just need to take a comparator signal off of the stations. Redstone torch on this side, then a redstone link. And then we just need to add some signals. So the first one is zinc and then it's iron, brass, Andesite, alloy, gold, and copper. And we're going to use these random triangles here just to give them a unique signal on the second part. Got to make sure they don't clash with any other redstone signals. And then we just need to match these up here. Now, when it pulls into a station, it will collect the resources. Excellent. So let's just disconnect that for now so it doesn't fill up on iron. Now, what I'll need to do is to name these stations. And what we're going to do is use a similar format to what we did for the delivery vehicles, where it was all called D1. We're going to go with S1 for this because it's security. So we'll just call that S1 Zinc. S1 iron and so on. So that's all of those names. We'll get all them labelled up as well. Okay, so now we need to sort out where they're actually getting dropped off to, but that should be simple enough. And a short while later, I've actually shrunk down the vaults over here. We don't need to be storing anywhere near as much of these things, although I have left the iron one nice and big. And if I set this signal here to match the same one that we've got over there, it means that when this area here is full, it's going to stop picking up iron from the van. This will basically lock the same storage interface that we just locked with the stations. So let's quickly get this van out of the tunnel. And then we need to find ourselves a driver. Here we go. Tasmanian Devil, you'll do. You wouldn't mind sitting down in there, sir. And now we'll just quickly make him a schedule. So I think we've got the schedule set. He's going to go to all six of the collection points here and then go to the drop-off. Hopefully that should work. So off you go, sir. And this road here is actually one way, so he's going to have to sort of loop all the way through the yard, I think, at the start here. But he seems to be finding his way just fine. This is good. And then down into the tunnel. Good stuff. And now he's collecting all the things. Look at him go. Now he should come up this way. And then lastly, he should come to this drop-off point here. And hopefully I've chosen the right station for him to stop at. And no, no, I did not. So he actually needs the second drop-off station. Basically, the first truck I built wasn't to the current specification, so it uses a different one. I mean, I could go back and change it, but I'm not gonna. Right, there we go. He's where he's supposed to be now. And hopefully once he's done, he'll drive off and just keep doing that loop. But as usual, I also need to make sure I'm not causing problems with the other trucks that are already running. I mean, there appears to be a bit of a traffic jam going on at the moment. But as long as they don't actually crash, we're all good. So let's just watch them for a bit like we usually do after a new vehicle is made.
I've been watching for a while and I'm happy to report there's been no accidents. There doesn't seem to be any issues, which is good because we've now got four vehicles running around on basically a single track railroad and they're not crashing into each other somehow. So, yep, that's all good. We like that. <laughs> Something we don't like, however, is that this factory kept running out of cobbles, so much so that I actually went over and grabbed a couple of boxes from the sort of main cobble factory or production zone, I should say. But we definitely, definitely 100% need to be getting more cobble over here. And we've got a couple of options. We could put a cobble generator in the top of this factory, but we've got quite a lot of cobble generators, so I'm not sure if that's the route I want to go. I mean, it was part of the original plan, but I'm still not sure. The other option is to increase the rate of cobble we're actually bringing over here, because this is the issue. We basically don't have enough coming into this place to keep up with their collections, because the cobble here is getting collected by this van for the moss place. And as you can see, it just took the 32 we had in there, so that's all it's got. Oh, no, it's got 64, you lucky thing. But either way, that means that when the truck comes over to collect cobble for this building, there's just not going to be any here for it, at least not until the train comes back again. And that train, well, it's not a short journey, because that train is traveling about 10,000 blocks all the way up here, and then all the way across over this way to our Savannah Industrial Zone, and the cobble factory is this one here, basically. So what we need to do is find a way of getting more of that cobble over here quicker. So let's go over to the Savannah and see what we're dealing with. Oh, I've missed this place. I feel like we've not been here in ages. But if we go check out our cobble supplies up here, we'll probably find we've got absolutely loads of it. Yep, look at that. We're basically full on so many volts. So we've got plenty of cobble. It's just in the wrong place. So what I need to do now is wait for that freight train to come back. Let's quickly have a look and see where about it is. So it's actually currently at the warehouse dropping stuff off. So he's going to be a while. Aha, here we are. Here comes the train. So the first thing I want to do is to grab your schedule. And we're letting this train load up, but as you can see, it can only hold a couple of thousand of each thing. And that's not really ideal, because we need to get lots and lots of cobble over there. So what I'm thinking I might do is actually adapt this carriage to carry nothing but cobble, and then put in another station slightly further down the tunnel, just so this train will pull forward and only load up this one. Otherwise, we're going to end up with lots of the other stuff as well, and we really don't need that. So in order to do that, I need to disassemble this train, but the problem is this tunnel's a little bit tight, and if I disassemble it, then it's probably going to end up picking up lots of the tunnel with it when I reassemble. It. And that's not ideal. So let's go outside and see if we can do this somewhere else. And if we just put a temporary station down here, that should do the trick nicely. So I don't think any other trains use this bit of track. Whoa! Well, apparently the liquid train has just driven through this train and killed his own driver. That's not ideal. We'll deal with that later. He can just sit there for now. At least he's out of the way. So it turns out other trains do use this bit of track. So what we need to do is put a storage interface there. We'll break in the top and just load it up with barrels. And the usual drop-off point is there in these other carriages, but... I don't know how we're going to line this up on the other side, actually. We'll figure that out when we get there. So I'm just going to quickly move the liquid train out of the way here. And what I need to do is put this train back together and then reverse it all the way back into its station again so we can line up the cobble collection. So I think I've got it. If we put this about here, approach that station. Yes, look at that. We're lined up. And now this thing's going to collect all the cobble. Wonderful. Look at that. There's loads of it. So what we need to do is give this station a name. So let's get him on his schedule. And what we now need to do is go see this guy at the other end and make sure we can actually unload all that cobble somewhere. But I mean, we do have a couple of choices because currently this is the drop-off point. So it stops at one station, which is here, and then basically drops off everything from the first cart and then it pulls forward, drops off everything from the second cart. But if we were to do that again and pull it forward even further, then, well, it's going to end up quite far forward, isn't it? I mean, probably here somewhere. Is that going to be an issue? It basically means we'd need another station probably around there somewhere. But we'll wait till the train gets here, Nabby's schedule, and have a little play around, see what we can do, I guess. Here he comes. Here comes our freight train. So we're going to let him do his first stop. We'll let him pull into his second stop. And then I'm going to nab the uh, nab the schedule and see if we can get him to pull into a third one. So he should pull up and empty this one. But now he's unloaded the first carriage. He should move on to the second. Just like that. Okay, let's go grab his schedule. And then once that's empty, we'll line it up for the third. A little bit of back and forth later, and we've got it all sorted and connected. And now we're going to be getting a whole lot more cobble over here. But it's taken me that long to do it. We've got a bit of a traffic jam going on here now. Everything has stopped. And I'm hoping that the factory can keep up because it should be bringing in sort of twelve to 15,000 cobble at a time. Instead of previously, where it was bringing in like 2,000. 17,500. That's not bad from one delivery. And if you bring similar amounts to that every time, then we're probably going to run out of cobble at the other end. But 
but whatever, that's fine. We'll deal with that if and when it happens. But the good news is the factory's finished. We've got lots of shinies being produced. We've got a new van that's dropping it all off. And we've made everything look nice as well. One last thing I do want to do is to name this train. And of course, name the area. And there were a lot more suggestions than I expected. So I have taken a bit of time to narrow it down and finally made some decisions. So we're going to be calling the area of Meridium Shores because, well, so many of the buildings are made out of Meridium, it just kind of makes sense. So thank you very much to Pretzel for that suggestion. And we're going to be calling the train the Seafront Runner. And a huge thank you to Dodanks for that suggestion. And apologies if I butchered your name. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.